Hello everybody, it's Nim and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whenever it is that you're watching this and I hope you will enjoy today's video. So today it's Friday, that means we are back with our Red Tail Zoo. We are nowhere near finished of this zoo. We have still so much terrain to cover and I have so many ideas like today we are doing the Indian elephant. But as you know, last Thursday, no, last Tuesday, the new pack came out, the East Asia or Southeast Asia animal pack. And oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. I love the animals that are in there. I'm so excited for it. Unfortunately, I couldn't do a build with them today um, because, you know, simply because of work, I didn't have time to build something which I dread, like, terribly because I really wanted to make a beautiful habitat. I am working on it currently and I hope that it will be finished by next week and I'm going to spoil the surprise, well it's not really a surprise, but I am going to build something for the proboscis monkey, you know the one with the big nose, the nose monkey, the squidward monkey, whatever you want to call it. We are working with that monkey and it has always been one of my favorite monkeys so obviously the first habitat I have to build with this pack is for that monkey and we all know I love primates so you know that's that. So right now we are building the Indian elephant habitat though we are seeing some elephants in the background because I just wanted to make sure that they couldn't escape while I was using these rocks. Luckily they couldn't because you know imagine placing down all the rocks and then finding out the animals can escape over that. That would be really annoying. Now, as always, I'm not going to show you every single stone that I place because, you know, no one is waiting for that. We ain't got time for that. You know, nobody has got time for that. We are using the same stones throughout the entire zoo, you know, to keep that um, feeling of uh, cohesive tea. Cohesive I don't know the English words for that. I know the word, but I can't pronounce it. The feeling of that it belongs together. That's the explanation of the word. I'm sorry. So right now we are just adjusting uh, some of the actual stones because, you know, um, peace counts. It's awful. This zoo is very large. It is going to be a full map zoo, like this mega zoo. And we are building on every single, like, inch that we have. Every pixel of your screen will be filled with buildings or stones or animals, you know, whatever. Every single bit will have something. And at the moment there are still some areas in this zoo where um, we haven't built or it looks a little bit bare. But you know, in the end, it will be alright. Like I know it will be like one of the last things I'm going, well, actually the last thing I'm going to do before I'm going to upload this zoo when it's all completely done. Which will probably be in a month or 15, you know, knowing me. Uh, I am going to go through every single inch of the zoo. We are going to put terrain pin paints where we might have forgotten it. Maybe we're going to put some more uh, rocks there or some more foliage. And obviously we are going to do the lightning because at the moment our zoo doesn't have any lights, which is kind of weird because a zoo, zoo, you kind of need lights. So we are going to give the zoo some lights. Plus I'm also going to fire all the stuff and then I'm going to redo all the staff areas because it is a big mess at the moment. It really is a mess and I just... I can't deal with that right now. Like, I don't want to do it in the middle of still working on the zoo because, you know... Why would I? Because then it's going to be mixed up anyway. I want to do that in the end. And I'm going to fire all the staff and then it will be good. Also, um, a few episodes ago I closed the zoo because there were so many guests that it lacked. In this episode, I decided to open the zoo up again because I kept getting notifications. So oh, no, your zoo has been closed for too long time. Oh no, open your zoo. And I'm like, yes, I know. And you know, um, it, it could happen that immediately though, after I opened the zoo, I got messages from the um, giant tortoises that they were stressed because of the amount of people. Uh, pro tip to anyone building in Planet Zoo or wanting to build a zoo in real life. Never place your giant tortoises near the front entrance of your zoo because all the guests will go th like next to it and the animals will get stressed a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Also there, uh, I keep saying also, my goodness. Um, we still have the problem with when you enter the zoo, you go to the left, you go to the otters and all the other animals, and then to the right, um, there is the gharials. And then after the gharials, there is this empty space. 
I'm still not quite sure what to do there. I was thinking maybe, you know, just maybe uh, I could build this giant uh, flamingo habitat there, like a flamingo paradise, who knows? Something like that, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, also, I was thinking of perhaps building a habitat for a white tiger because I found one in the animal trading. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna buy this, so I bought it. Not that I buy it with real life money anyway, or like in game money because we're in sandbox mode, so you know. But we do have uh, a white tiger now, and I was thinking perhaps I could build. A habitat for it you know a little bit nice because actually in one of the zoos where I used to go when the zoos were open there still aren't and I really get annoyed by that um, you have this you know Bengal tiger habitat and then like next to that you have this snow tiger habitat you know what they call it a snow tiger so I'm kind of tempted to do that in this zoo as well I'm not quite sure let me know in the comments down below what you think of the idea and you know, also let me know if you have some other ideas, perhaps for the Southeast Asia pack, some fun things that we could do. I am wanting to cooperate all the animals that are in the pack. You know, there are seven new animals, I believe. You have the weird thing that looks like a red panda, but isn't a red panda. Then you have the thing with an ugly face, well, not really ugly, but one with two horns and then two other weird horns that's called a Babirusa, I believe you pronounce it like that, I'm not quite sure. Then you have the doll, which looks like a dog. Then you have the Malayan tape here, the sun bear and the proboscis monkey. And there is also a green leaf insect thing. I, I need to build more uh, reptile homes anyway, so we are going to build that. We are going to incorporate that at some point in this zoo. But an insect home will probably be one of the last things that I will build. Perhaps? I will do an insect home over the water because we have this big body of water where we have the um, the bone rod going and there isn't really anything in the water. I was thinking, you know, perhaps crocodiles, but I really think that's kind of a cliche and I don't really want to do that. So maybe I could build this cool um, uh, exhibit hall. Let me know what you think. I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet, but let me know. So going back to the subject of the video, the Indian elephants, we are building a, a dome at the moment for the elephants. And you know, you, you build a dome, first you build one side of the dome, then you copy it over, then you exit the group. Then you click the group again, press XX, and then you can rotate it like that. And you can build beautiful domes with it. Now this dome is, well, I wouldn't say it's extremely large, but it's not tiny as well, you know, just because it is for an elephant, so it doesn't need to be very um, short. That's what's like. It doesn't need to be short. The elephants need to go in there. They need to have enough space. And sometimes you need to rotate it a little bit more because you get little gaps. But, uh, you know, rotate it enough times and it will work. So we have that. Um, obviously, this is not going to be the only thing that we're going to do. We have this dome and, like, um, incorporated with the dome or rather attached to it, we are going to build this big um, elephant hall, resort sort of thing, just where they can walk in, sleep, and you as a guest can see them better. Because I didn't want to put this elephant home um, like on the border of the habitat. I wanted to have to like a little bit of privacy because you know I, I do believe animals have a right to their privacy and I don't really care that much for what the guests think. If the guests are like, ooh, I can't see the animal, I'm like, well, you know, tough luck. Because I want animals to have privacy as well. Don't expect to go to any of my zoos and be able to see all the animals. Sometimes you just don't see them and you're just gonna have to deal with it. Unfortunately, you know, guests can't, but they still pay and that's what's important. Plus, we are going to have a monorail in the end and it will go over all the animals and will give you a lovely view. So, you know, here I'm just building, building away, building away. And I always think building in Planet Zoo, when you start, it looks so darn ugly. I mean, look at this. I'm just building, you know, putting squares down and I'm like, oh yeah, I built a dome and now I'm building a rectangle next to it with a little bump out, but I guess that's the essential of building. You know, same when I, I, I used to play a lot of The Sims, I play a little bit less now. Um, but whatever, like I started to build a home or anything in The Sims, it would be like, oh yeah, I built a box, 
and now I'm going to expand on this box. And that's what I do in Planet Zoo as well. I build a, I build a building, build a box, and then I build bump outs. That's just how you build, or that's how I build. Now I don't want to say for everyone, because not everyone builds the same, but that's how I build, and I think it actually works pretty darn good. You know, this weekend is Easter, so, you know, we celebrate that... Well, today, actually, on Friday, we celebrate the death of Jesus, and then on Easter we celebrate that he was risen from the grave, and he's alive, and died for all our sins, so... Happy Easter! Um, perhaps you're not religious, perhaps you're celebrating it with Easter egg search or whatever. Or perhaps you have a different religion, uh, that's all, you know, welcome, I don't, I don't really care for that. But, you know, happy Easter and all that stuff, and I hope you have a wonderful day this day and also on, obviously, like, Sunday when it's the e first day of Easter. And for the Dutch people out here, I hope you have a lovely second day of Easter as well. <laughs> Well, we and our Dutch people, we are so lucky with two holidays, two times Christmas, two times Easter. We have two of everything. Love it. Ah, yeah, we are decorating now. We are decorating the elephant's home, making sure that it's very clear for all the people that elephants live here. And I found these leaves. I uh, found them already when I was building the dome. But these leaves, they are so cute. I believe most of them are from the South America pack, I believe. I'm not quite sure. Before the South America pack, I never really saw them, so I'm guessing they're from the South America pack. That's the one thing I miss in Planet Zoo, what all the other, um, well, not all the other, but like this, all the Sims game had. Whenever I had an item, it would tell me with a little symbol what pack it was from. And I really, really miss that in Planet Zoo. Now, I get that it doesn't really care um, what pack it comes from, but it's still... I think it's rather annoying because, for instance, if I wanted to build something that was just the base game, I have to disable all my DLCs instead of just... Well, I guess I could just filter base game, but you know, I know I've got time for that. I don't want to scroll through and see like, oh, this is base game. Oh, this is uh, the Arctic pack. Now, some things I'm recognizing, but others, man, I just don't recognize it. I really don't. Also, I thought it was very clever of me to write elephant there, you know, just in case you were, you wasn't sure what animal was actually in there. So, just so you all know, there's an elephant in there. It's written, there's a statue, you know, just in case you don't recognize the end, giant animal that is in there. I mean, that could happen. That's a very likely, yet somehow unlikely possibility that you don't recognize what an elephant is. I'm going to ramble on, but I have this, um, well, not I, there on TV there is this documentary about baby animals in their first year, and there is this baby elephant, and she is so cute. Like, you could see her being born, and then, you know, actually within an hour, she had to be able to walk and do all those stuff, and I'm just like, whoa, that's amazing, that's so, so cool. I love baby animals, they're like my favorites, so, you know really cute and then they explain with how they learn with their uh with their trunk trunk yeah it's a trunk how they learn you know uh touching and feeling and actually for the first year they can't really pick their own food so they have to drink with their mother which makes more sense now when i think of planet zoo are used to complain like Ugh, why do these animals take so much time with their mother like why can't you just grow up but physically, they aren't able to do that yet. And I really think that's quite interesting. And I know there are probably a lot of people here that are like, Ugh, Nim, why didn't you just know that? That's like common knowledge. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't. As a child, to be honest, I wasn't really interested in animals. I was interested in history of Egypt. So ask me anything about that and I'll know it. But baby elephants, eh, I gotta explore that entire subject. I need to learn that all along again which is actually really nice because i love learning so you know that's cool oh yeah now we are just doing terrain paint because you know um i i said to myself like nim you are going to do the terrain paint in every single habitat like it doesn't need to be perfect much rather you know i i would really prefer it to be perfect but i can't expect that from every single habitat gotta be realistic here as well but damn Terrain paint, I didn't use that enough because it's actually quite 
quite handy and quite amazing. I mean, look at how much it actually changes the entire habitat. Just this little bit of dirt. I'm so amazed by that. That's really, really cool. Also, if you can hear the front door slamming, that's someone coming home. And I'm very sure that in a few seconds or a minute or so, there's going to be some shouting, like saying hi. So I'm sorry if you could hear all that in the background. Also, I start to think of it. I believe you can also hear my clock in the background ticking. And if you didn't already and now you start to hear it, I'm sorry. <laughs> but also, you know, it's kind of funny. Ah, yes, the mud bed. Oh, yeah, oh, the mud bed, man. I wanted to incorporate this so well and I just couldn't get it done. I mean, it's not really nicely incorporated. It is somehow incorporated. It's more it's more like decorated instead of incorporated. With the p-files it worked out really well, but for this it just didn't work out the way I wanted it. And I mean, that's fine. You can't have everything and that's like something that I'm slowly but surely learning. We're all learning, we're all processes. I'm very I want things to be perfect and sometimes things just aren't and that's fine as well so man look at these rock placing so such perfect such delicance <laughs> really not yeah when i am um, this is a fun thing though oh, i don't have time for that i'll tell the fun thing another time because actually in a minute or so um this video is ending so if you are still here and you are still watching and you have listened to me talking for these like 15 17 17 minutes thank you very much and uh, you know you could subscribe there is a button if you haven't already because i know that 80 percent of my viewers aren't subscribed i mean why not i'm a delight so please subscribe and you'll get more content of this and if you really like it you can also comment and put a thumbs up you know, it helps the channel grow, it helps me out, it gets more recognition to my YouTube channel, and that's, you know, what I want. I don't want to have a giant ass channel, but I want a little bit of a bigger channel, you know, I want to inspire people. But I'm not going to talk about that now, because actually it is time to go, and I'm going to leave you guys with the cinematics. Do stay tuned for that, because they are incredibly, incredibly cute. Really, honestly, they're, they're elephants, like, it's cute. So guys, I wish you a very good afternoon, morning or evening, like whenever it is you're watching this. And I will hope to see you on Monday for the zoo tour. Bye guys.